Hey guys, it's Christy with Zen 10 Lotus Terra, and I'm just coming to you with this really quick video from outside. Don't know how long that's gonna last, simply because um, I cooked dinner on the fire, and so like, I don't know, I think I like conjured up some wildlife, because I already heard them banging around when I just went to my car for something, so I'm gonna try and get through this as fast as I possibly can. <clears throat> I've got a lot of intuitive downloads today, a lot of... Um, channeled messages that I'd like to share and the cards that I just threw out in the pre-shuffle were pretty indicative of what I need to talk about today. So this is a collective read. Um, I will try and throw out some energies to see if anything specific comes out but mainly the biggest thing, the card I pulled for healing work, right? because that's what we're interested in here at this channel is to take any kind of energy that comes through towards us in any way. We deal with life every single day. That's never gonna change. You know, there's gonna be ups, there's gonna be downs. There's gonna be drama. There's gonna be chaos. There's gonna be confusion. The biggest thing is, is to become aware of when that's occurring in your life and to be able to shift that energy into a manner where you're able to cope with Right? And even if that means uh, being triggered in a way that actually brings about your own healing in some manner. What does it mean when something or someone is triggered? Okay. One of these books that I read a really long time ago, it was such a long time ago, I can't even remember the name of it, but it was a very good book about triggering. And in order to do the shadow work around triggering, this book had you write down every word that if somebody were to say it about you, or if somebody were to think it about you, or if somebody were to believe that to be who you are in this world. Just a word, just one simple word, you know? I mean, they asked you to make a list in this book, but um, it really is indicative of the things that within you are things that aren't healed, you know, in some way. So I don't know if that's something that you would like to do sometime, but it's just, it's a really cool exercise to write down some of those things that if people were to think certain things about you, or people were to say certain, certain things about you, or feel a certain way about who you are in this world, you know, what are some of the worst that you wouldn't be able to handle? And in fact, so much so that you wouldn't be able to handle them that you make it a point to be sure that you're not that in life. Usually there's a part of us that deep down in our subconscious somewhere hidden, you know, without our, even our actual knowledge is that we are just that, whatever it is that we don't want to be, you know? We all have light and dark. We're all a yin-yang energy. We all have unhealed wounds, we all have unhealed trauma, we all have things that still affect us, even when we don't realize that they do, you know? And so that's a really cool exercise to see if there's some things in your life that just aren't healed and, and you're just not even recognizing that those things aren't healed within you, but they actually affect your day-to-day -day life, you know? And so shadow work isn't easy it's not it's not something fun nobody wants to do it <laughs> you know nobody wants to feel triggered nobody wants to feel that inner uncomfort or that inner anxiety or that inner like not enoughness in some way or um lacking in some way even if it's even if it's um even if it's something that like it's it could be the worst thing anybody could ever say to you you know and it's like deep down somewhere in your subconscious in your heart in your soul space there's either a wound there that's unhealed or you physically carry those characteristics in some way and it's like a daily job to hide them in some way and so it's a great exercise and it's just something that you know it's a good place to start with self-awareness because we have to be aware of what it is that triggers us so that we can heal it or work on it 
or recognize it or begin the process of being able to transmute that energy into a way that could benefit our life, you know? Just an example, okay? Most of my life, and, and back when I read that book, you know, the number one thing that I wrote down is selfish, you know? To me, from programming, from hearing it every single day, from um, knowing what that meant to the people around me or to the people uh, in society or whatever it is, the idea to me of being a selfish person was the worst thing that anybody could think of me. Number one on my list, not even gonna lie. And um, I spent most of my life being adamant about never being self selfish. In fact, there was a part of me that was selfless. Do you know what I mean? In the pursuit of not being selfish. And counterintuitive, you know what I'm saying? Because if, if we're not in some way a little selfish about who we are, what we want, what we do, how we move, how we um, navigate our life and have some sort of control over that in some way, in some self-loving way, you know, then we become a puppet for somebody else, you know, a puppet of our life story, a puppet of our family, a puppet of our friends, of society, of not that those people aren't super important in our life and not that that we don't want to do things that please those people in our life, you know? But there has to be a balance, you know? It's okay to be a little selfish when it comes to your own life, you know? When it comes to your own goals and aspirations and ambitions and things that you want for yourself or the way that you see that your life should unfold for you or that you dream of your life to unfold for you you know and, and people can spend a lot of years being selfless and not doing that simply to not be selfish and so that's why that exercise is so cool and that's just a little brief example of how that exercise helped me a little bit to um, begin to recognize excuse me spirit thank you to begin to recognize that it, um, sometimes selfish is necessary. Sometimes selfish is uh, your only choice, you know, between being okay and not being okay, you know? And, and what I mean by that is, is if you're giving of yourself to everybody around you, doing what everybody thinks is what is right for you, except for you, <laughs> <laughs> to please everyone else around you. You know, people pleasers are the biggest, biggest, um, probably, uh, proponents of not being selfish because, um, it, it's almost like a taboo to be selfish, you know? And, and so they thrive in that feeling of giving or, um, over giving or, being so selfless that their cup is literally empty to the point of the inability to be able to give to others the way that they should, you know, they're depleted. And so it's like, even though it looks like they're giving of all their time, effort and energy to everybody around them, they're really, they really don't have anything to give. It's like, um, half ass shit, you know, like, like, okay, if my only goal in life is to be, uh, the best mother I can be, and so I make sure and do everything for everybody, you know, in my family or around me at that time. Like, I'm still not good, you know, and I'm not being the best mother I can be because I, I wasn't thinking of myself. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't doing anything to fulfill me on a personal level that has nothing to do with anything or anybody but me. And so at this time, I really feel intuitively that with the sacred phoenix heart coming out, it's like you're becoming aware of all these things in your life that you did wrong. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a um, negative way. I mean it in a way of like, okay, this is where things could have been different. 
had I been different. And even though what you thought you were doing was for the best interest of everybody around you, it was like you weren't capable of being your most best highest self at that time because you you gave every piece of your energy away you didn't leave any for you you know and so at this time in this healing process of finding yourself it's like you're noticing that the more you give to yourself the happier you are the more that you can give that love and that um, amazingness to everybody around you because your cup is full you know and so if anybody out there right now is struggling with the idea of self-love, self-worth, taking time out to do the things that you love, deciding what it is that you want for your life path, whether it's in um, relationships, whether it's in business, whether it's in um, career, whether it's in ambitions or things that you just enjoy, you have got to make sure that your cup is full. You know, as selfish as that sounds, even to say it, sometimes it makes me cringe a little bit. You know, that's still that trigger point within me that's like, oh, I'm not allowed to be selfish, <laughs> you know, and I don't, that's not what I want to be and that's not who I am and that's not what I want to do. I want to be the giver. I want to be the uh, nurturer. I want to be the lover. But Spirit is saying you can't be any of those things, not to your full potential of it. If you can't do that for yourself first, in some way. This card is about taking all that you've learned, all that you've done to heal that part of you. That part of you that has finally taken the initiative to do the things that you want to do. They might, you know, here's the deal. You're upsetting some apple carts, <laughs> you know, along the way. And... That doesn't always feel good either, you know, to, to feel like we're disappointing others in that process of making ourselves happy. That makes that trigger point of selfish a little bit uh, tougher, you know, a little bit more triggering, a little bit more uncomfortable. But Spirit is saying that like by you doing this you have ascended into this version of yourself that are is just exuding love you know it's like you just have so much to give because you are finally full you know you are finally taking care of you and and when you do that and you become fulfilled with the things that light you up it's like you can't find anything bad to even think you can't find anything bad to speak of. You can't find anything not to be uh, super grateful for. You can't find anything to complain about. You can't find those things to bring you down. It's like your spirit can't be broken when you're full. It's so weird because a couple weeks back, like at church, our um, preacher said, like, if, if you... I want to know how I, I'm trying to think how he put it. It was so cool. But it was like, you know, you have to, your cup has to be full. It just, you know, it has to be full of good things. It has to be full of the things that light you up, the things that make you feel spiritually okay, the things that make you feel, um, you know, emotionally fulfilled, the things that make you feel whole, you know? If you're not giving to yourself and you're not taking the time, effort, and energy to make room for you in your own life, in your own self-care, in your own self-worth, in your own self-discovery, in your own self-awareness of what it is that you do need or that you're requiring in order to feel good, if you're not paying attention to those things, everything around you will fall apart. One thing by one thing everything will be lacking around you because you have no energy to give you're not fulfilled so um spirit at this at this time is encouraging you that no matter what it is that you're doing at this time make sure that you're first in it you know even if you upset the apple carts even if you get some booze in the crowd like who she thinks she is or whatever it is you know what i mean like hater energy throw love back at you know what I mean? If it's, if it's that, um, 
your disappointing family, friends, loved ones, you know, you have to start to recognize and decide around you. Like, pray for the people around you who aren't happy for you being happy. That's pretty shitty energy. But the thing is, is that we're not going to, like, match shittiness with shittiness. It's just a matter of saying, I'm okay with uh, me being happy. And anybody that's not okay with me being happy, maybe those are people I need to let go at this time until they can start to wrap their head around the idea that uh, my happiness begins with me. And that means me making decisions for me, not anybody making decisions for me. Not the influence of my friends, not the influence of my family, not the influence of Joe Blow in the background, you know, with his trolling ass or whatever. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you've got to do whatever it is that makes you happy first. And you at this time are just ecstatic and curious about surrounding yourself with people who, like, make you happy. You know, who make you laugh, who make you enjoy life, who you have a good time with, who you feel safe with, who you feel home with, who you feel loved by. You know, and that's who you're choosing to surround yourself with, are those people who are happy for your happy, who share in your happy, who are part of what make you happy, who, you know, like light you up in some way, make you a better person. Um, I don't know, just uh, open your eyes to the idea that you, not everything has to be bad, you know, not, not everything has to be chaotic, not everything has to be... Um, negative, you know? You can pray for the negative Nancys of the world, and you can love them, and you can um, try and open their heart as much as possible, but when you begin to feel your energy deplete around people like this, you have to put up boundaries, you know? Boundaries are for you, and that's self-love, and that's self-care, and that's recognizing that your energy is depleted, Excuse me, Spirit, thank you. When you're not around people who are positive or people who are excited about life or people who are curious about life or people who are willing to collaborate in good ways with you to, to like, mastermind with and, like, like, you know, like, bounce things off of. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not in high-vibing energy, you immediately feel your energy deplete. And so if people around you are noticing that boundaries are up, it's for good reason. Because you're now recognizing those people, places, things, ideas, and situations that no longer serve you. And that is boss energy. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. I don't really care. Because the bottom line is the only people that get pissed off about boundaries are the people that have boundaries, you know, that, that you put boundaries up with. <laughs> so... If you got people out there complaining about the, the boundaries, ask them why they were put up in the first place. You know what I mean? Like, do you recognize the behavior that put the boundaries up in the first place? Do you recognize the toxicity that, you know, that, that I had to walk away from, you know? And, and it's like, and it's not even like, a, it's not a bad thing. It's like, hey, go heal, you know? Like, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to... Um, hope that you start to become aware of some things and I love you and I wish you well but I also don't have to choose to stay involved in that kind of stuff you know I can choose to move forward in my life um, surround myself with the people who are happy people who are positive people who light me up who lift me up who cheer me on no matter what um, no jealousy no hate no envy no nothing you know just good people so I hope this has helped you in some way. Um, I'm going to come back and throw some cards down, but my batteries, or not my battery, my time's running out. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye.